Hello, you are watching Shalom World News. I'm Rudy McLennan coming to you from Glasgow, Scotland. Here are the latest headlines from around the world. During his customary Sunday Angelus address, the Holy Father Pope Francis once again made a passionate appeal for an end to war. He urged belligerent nations to lay down their weapons for an Easter truce. However, he warned that the ceasefire should not be used as an opportunity to procure more weapons and begin combat once again. The pontiff called for a lasting truce that holds to peace through real negotiations that involve some sacrifice for the good of the people. His Holiness said that waging war to win something according to the way of the world is the only way to lose it. Citing the fiat or the yes that Our Lady said at the Annunciation, the Holy Father repeatedly said that nothing is impossible for God, adding that he can even bring an end to a war whose end is not in sight. The violence against Catholics and churches is continuing in Myanmar. In the latest incident, the military forced their way into the Catholic Cathedral of the Sacred Heart in Mandalay on April the 8th and detained worshippers along with the Vicar General Monsignor Dominic Jo Du, who questioned the soldiers' presence. The troops, numbering around 40, barged in asking for supposedly hidden gold, money and weapons. When the priests told the troops that they had some money that was intended for the poor, they detained him. They also brought Archbishop Marco Tin Nguyen, who had been in another building, and made him remain in the cathedral with the faithful. All were detained for more than two hours before they were all allowed to leave the building. It is reported that a garrison is still stationed there. Ever since the February the 1st military coup in Myanmar, atrocities against Christians are on the rise. In the US state of Kentucky, Governor Andy Beshear has signed into law an act that protects religious freedom and the right to worship. The declared State of Emergency Religious Freedom Act HB 43 was inked on April the 5th and it authorises churches to remain open alongside other essential services even during an emergency, including a pandemic. It also prohibits any government body from denying religious services. According to State Representative Shane Baker, who sponsored the bill, it is a move to defend religious liberty due to constraints imposed during the COVID-19 emergency, when churches and other places of worship were forced to close. The law has three clauses that ensure that a governmental agency cannot prohibit or restrict a religious institution to the same or greater level as other essential or vital organisations or enterprises during a proclaimed emergency. In the US state of Maryland, the General Assembly overrode the governor's veto to expand access to the termination of pregnancy in the state on Saturday, April the 9th. The bid to end a restriction that only doctors can perform abortions was vetoed by Governor Larry Hogan, only to be overridden by the Assembly. As per the new law, even nurses, midwives and physician assistants can be trained to perform abortions. This creates an abortion training program that requires a state fund of $3.5 million a year. The new law will also require most insurance plans to cover abortion costs. This comes at a time when the US Supreme Court is examining the constitutionality of the Mississippi Fetal Heartbeat Law, which could overturn Roe v. Wade that legalised abortion across the US in 1973. The new law will come into effect on the 1st of July. On the initiative of the Ukrainian Council of Churches, an interdenominational prayer service for Ukraine was held on Saturday, April the 9th. Entitled Common Prayer for Ukraine, the event took place in the St. Sophia Cathedral in Kiev, and it was presided over by Ukrainian Greek Catholic Major Archbishop Svetislav Shevchuk. Also taking part in the prayer service were his Beatitude Epiphanius, Primate of the Orthodox Church of Ukraine, Bishop Mikhailo Komansky, the Exarch of the Ecumenical Patriarch, Bishop Vitaly Krivitsky, the Ordinary of the Kiev Zhitomir Diocese of the Roman Catholic Church, and Bishop Marcos Hovanasian, Head of the Ukrainian Diocese of the Armenian Apostolic Church. Also present was Pastor Leonid Padun of the Christian Evangelical Church. Praying for the restoration of peace in the nation, they also implored Almighty God to protect Ukraine, to end the slaughter caused by the war, and to safeguard cities and villages destroyed by Russian missiles. In the war, which entered its 48th day, millions have fled to neighbouring countries. On Easter Sunday, more than 50,000 Italian teenagers from different dioceses across the country will assemble in St Peter's Square to interact with the Holy Father Pope Francis and to take part in a prayer vigil. Children between the ages of 12 and 17 will gather in the square. 
And this comes after a two-year break from such events because of the COVID-19 pandemic. The National Youth Ministry Service of the Conference of Italian Bishops is hosting the pilgrimage and the children will be led by bishops, priests and nuns. The theme of this year's pilgrimage is Follow Me, taken from the Gospel of St John, in which Jesus beckons St Peter to follow him. After the recitation of the Regina Celi at noon, the children will assemble in the square from 2.30pm and at 5.30 the Holy Father will address them. It will be followed by a prayer vigil with reflections on the Gospel of St John. Archbishop Guy de Carimel of the French city of Toulouse has strongly condemned the planting of explosives in St Etienne Cathedral on April the 8th. Police were able to find and defuse the device. In a statement, the prelate said, I strongly condemn this act and regret that in our country a place of prayer, as well as its faithful, are targeted by an explosive device. I expect public authorities to shed full light. The Archbishop also exhorted believers to celebrate Holy Week with confidence. According to police, a man in his 40s has been apprehended in connection with the incident. About 30 people had gathered for the morning mass when a man with a package entered the church and left it in front of the altar before quickly making an exit. However, the timely intervention of the police helped neutralise the explosive and cordon off the area. Investigators said that the alleged culprit had been known to police for drink driving, narcotic use and contempt of officers. And those are your latest headlines. Do join us again tomorrow. You can also visit swnews.org for more updates. Shalom.